my Periscope audience and hello to my Facebook audience. Prophet David Taylor here. All right, let's uh, jump right in because I want to get started because as always, I have a lot to say. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your mighty grace. Thank you for an opportunity, oh God, to be used of you to hear from you, oh God, because the most precious thing we have in this world is your word. We can't live without your word. So I just want to personally thank you, Father, for extending your grace one more day and give us, giving us another chance to hear from you because we have no guidance, no light, no direction, no hope. We have no chance without you, God. We need, need you. So we humble ourselves before you, O God, as humble as we know how, and we're, we're ready to receive what you have to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and we give you the glory in all things. I use my mouth, use my brain, use my tongue. Use me. I surrender to you, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right. <clears throat> so as always, you know, y'all, those of y'all that have watched me for a while, you know, I'm pretty consistent. I say the same things every week. So I'm going to give you a lot of information. There's a lot of information going to come at you today. So you're going to have to watch this video more than one time. We're going to start off with my tagline. What's my tagline? God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. That's one of the advantages of being a Christian. You can find out stuff before it happens. Okay? But you got to listen to the prophets. All right? Welcome to all my audiences, Facebook Live, Periscope, and YouTube. Um, my goal is to get this prophetic word out to millions of people, so please like and share. Whenever God releases a prophetic word or a prophetic gift or a prophet to a nation or across the planet. So please like and share this video as much as you can. If you want to sow into my ministry, I have my PayPal.me link on all my profiles and my Amazon Smile link. Um, how you find me online is always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT so you know that it's me. Because I know there's other people out there, you know, named David Taylor, whatever, but ha everything I do is hashtag with PDT. That's me. being sure that we're walking in true faith according to the word. Sorry, Facebook, I know that just froze. I know it just stuttered. Couldn't help that. I, you know, I've got updated internet. I've done everything I know how to do on this end, so I'm just trying to rebuke the devil now because it seems like my internet don't want to drop till I come on and try to minister, but that's the enemy. So we're going to rebuke that internet dropping demon in Jesus' name so the word of God can come forth. All right? Okay, so let's jump into today's message. The prophetic word for today is push, P-U-S-H. The prophetic word for today is push, and we're going to look at two basic scriptures. The first scripture we're going to look at is Luke chapter 5, verse 4, but I'm going to read 1 through 4. Now, Luke is the third book in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, okay? Luke was a doctor. He was a physician, if you didn't know that. So it's the third uh, book in the New Testament talking about Jesus' life. Okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Chapter 5, I'm going to focus on verse 4, but I'm going to read verse 1 through 4. <clears throat> I'm reading out the King James Version. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little more from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. Now I'm going to explain all that, but there's something else I want to throw out. I want you to pay attention to something. Whenever you have one of them strange days, that means God is trying to sneak something in there in your life, and the enemy is trying to distract you and drive you from it. Today, so far, has been a strange day. First of all, we lost an hour. I was awake when time changed. So I watched it go from like 1.58, and then there was no 2 o'clock. It just jumped to 3 o'clock. 
So I was awake this morning when we lost that hour, number one. Number two, when I went to church this morning, we didn't have no heat. There was heat in the basement. There wasn't any heat in the sanctuary. Just kind of, some kind of strange stuff happening. And this is March. So, you know, third month, sometimes strange things happening. I found out when stuff like that is going on, that means God is going to drop something on you in that day that the enemy is trying to distract you from using other things. And so what the Lord gave me to share today was about pushing. Now, let's read Luke 5, 4 in the Berean Study Bible. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down your nets <clears throat> for a catch. Excuse me. <clears throat> that phrase there, put out, uh, in the Greek, uh, it means to lead up on, to put out, to return. So in other words, and then the next part is into deep water. That word is bathos, and it says profundity, extent, mystery. So you know what that means in simple terms? What that means in simple terms is that God is telling us this day that we need to push out further into what we're trying to get into. We need to push out in the deep water. What's the difference between deep water and shallow water? Shallow water is right near the shore. It's right near the beach. You can stand in that and go, you know, ankle deep, knee deep as much as you want. But when you get out into deep water, deep water is up over your head and you got to swim or walk on water, or be in a boat, but you got to do something. You can't just stand in deep water. And the Lord is calling us to push out into that. Why? Because there are mysteries out there. He said, push out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. So what that means when you add all that up is that some of the things that you've been praying to God about, you are going to have to take a chance to get them. <laughs> let me say that again. Some of the things that you have been praying to God about getting, you're going to have to take a chance to get them. Okay? Are there other examples of that in the Bible? Yes, there are. Ruth. When Ruth came into town, remember that Ruth was a young widow, and Boaz knew who she was, but Ruth wanted Boaz to redeem her, to marry her, and to become her husband. So what did she do? She did something that a woman shouldn't do. She came to visit Boaz on the threshing room floor at night while he was sleeping. Do you know what it would do to you if you know you went to bed in your room by yourself and you woke up and somebody was sitting at the foot of your bed? What would that do? Today we shoot him. But that's the kind of chance that Ruth took. And Boaz was like, what the world? And Ruth made her desire known. And then they had to sneak her out before daybreak, because Boaz said, lest it be known that a woman came on the threshing room floor. She wasn't supposed to be there. But she pushed. And that's how she got her husband, which, by the way, was also the richest man in town. Okay? That's not the only way she got him, but there's a chance she took. Okay? You want another example of somebody took a chance? That would be Esther. Esther's story is incredible. I don't have time to tell you the whole story. But long story short, Esther had to go petition the king to save the life of the Jews, and she was scared. She didn't want to do it. Because Esther understood that if she stepped to the king wrong, he'd have her head cut off. He'd just wave his hand and have her head cut off, no second chances. So she didn't want to do it. Because she knew if she stepped to the king wrong, it would be the end of her life. And her uncle, Mordecai, told her, this is your chance, this is your place in history. This is the whole reason God lets you become queen, so you can go in there to the king and intercede and save the Jews. And Mordecai told Esther, if you don't go, God is still going to deliver the Jews. It's just that you're going to miss your place. It's going to come from someplace else. He basically told Esther that God don't need you. He's giving you a chance to get your place in history. Then Esther said her famous words, if I perish, let me perish. I'm going to see the king. That's an old school song in African American culture. If you ever wonder where that, came, where that came from, where people say, if I perish, let me perish, that's Queen Esther's words. When she made up her mind to go intercede for her entire nation before the king, and if she stepped wrong, she could have been beheaded like that. But she took a chance. Okay, she pushed out into deep water. That's what this means. Okay, so God is calling us in this hour to push out. That means we have to go away from comfort zones. We have to go away from everything that we know on the shore, and you got to get in water that's up over your head. 
okay? Uh, but they were in a boat, <laughs> so you can be in a boat. Just understand it's not water that's, you know, ankle deep or knee deep. And then it says, let down your nets for a catch. So in other words, the stuff you're trying to get from God, it's there. It's just not on the shore. <laughs> it's way out there in the middle of the water. You got to go out there and get it. Notice the Lord did not say, I will bring the fish to you. <laughs> Notice the Lord said, you got to launch out into the deep water, then let your nets down. Okay? So, because when the Holy Ghost first gave me that word, I thought it was kind of unusual. I was like, what do you mean push? And then he showed me the scripture, and I'm like, oh, now I see what you mean. That there are, again, deep water in English, that word is bathos in Greek, and it means profundity. It means something profound. It means an extent or mystery. And what that means in plain English is... There's the surface stuff that you can know, and then there's the deep stuff you have to press out to know. There are some people that write books about being a parent because they have theories about raising a child. Nothing wrong with that. And then there are some people that actually have raised a child and are parents. And what you got is more than theories because you got deep water. You understand? You got some deep water experiences that other people don't have if they haven't raised a child. That's, that's another example of what I mean. See what I'm talking about? And so this is very, very significant because that means the places that some of us have been looking for our answers aren't back here in the safety of the shore or the comfortable or the familiar. They're out there in the deep water and you got to push out there to get to them. That's not what a lot of us want to hear. That's not what a lot of us want to do. And that's why so many people don't get to where they need to go in God and don't get to where they need to go in life because they won't take any chances. They won't push. They won't press. They won't go into deep water. Okay? Let's look at the second scripture. Second scripture is Philippians 3.14. I know you're very familiar with that. I'm going to read out of the Berean Study Bible. Philippians is one of the epistles written by the Apostle Paul, to the church at Philippi, to the Philippian church. That's why it's called Philippians. It's a letter, okay? And normally when you see Apostle Paul writing his epistles, his letters, they're in response to letters that the churches have already written to him, okay? So we're going to read at, uh, starting at verse uh, 13, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have laid hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize of God's heavenly calling in Christ Jesus. Wow. I press on toward the goal to win the prize of God's heavenly calling in Christ Jesus. Okay, now that phrase press on in Greek, it means to pursue. Uh, a prolonged form of pursuing. Okay, it means to go after it and go after it in a prolonged way if you have to. Now, why is that so important? Because people tend to use that verse to talk about heaven. Okay, it says God's heavenly calling or heavenly prize, but it doesn't just mean when we get to heaven. It means the things that God wanted you to walk in on earth right now. Paul said, you got to press toward it. I press toward the goal to win the prize of God's heavenly calling in Christ Jesus. That's just not when you die. That's right now. Okay? So once again, the scripture there is saying we got to press. we got to push. Let me tell you something about the prophetic. A lot of people think that God just speaks to some people like he has some kind of relationship and all those people are so deep. But that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says that God is no respecter of person. The scripture says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things, which thou knowest not, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 33, 3. The scripture says that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, not a rewarder of the apostles that diligently seek him, whoever diligently seeks him. And a lot of people are not where they want to be in God because they won't press in. What does it mean to press into God? It means you get up an hour or two early and you spend more time in the word than you normally do. It means you sacrifice some things to give some offerings, like maybe you give up your specialty coffee so you can put that money in the offering plate at church. 
maybe you you give up some entertainment one day a week that you normally do. So instead of, you know, every night when you get to work and let's say you watch TV, maybe just one night a week instead of watching TV, you get in the scriptures and you go to church. That's what it means. you got to press. Because I know what we want is everything to come at our convenience. Everybody wants that. Everybody wants that. But anybody that's ever been to college or been to university will tell you that you don't graduate from university at your convenience. You have to press. You got to press on the 8 o'clock in the morning classes. You got to press to be disciplined to do that homework. You got to press to prepare for those exams because the professor will give you the syllabus for the semester at the beginning of the semester. And what most people do is just procrastinate and they wait till the night before their papers due to start writing their term paper or start studying for their final. Mm -mm. People that know how to press, press in to get that knowledge. So by the time the test comes, they've mastered it. You can't do that overnight. You see what I mean? That's why it talks about a prolonged form. So what does that mean in a practical sense? That means that if you were going after that bank loan to start that business, you might have to keep applying. There are a lot of people that started their businesses and got rejected by the bank. Two, five, seven, 10, 12, 15. One woman got rejected over 50 times and she kept going until she got that loan. Okay? You might not find a college that will take you or it might not be the college you want to go to. But you have to keep applying to schools until you can find a school that has the program you want to get the degree you want and will accept you as a student. A lot of people make the same mistake with dating. They say they want to be married, but they just accept like maybe who's available or who's around them now or somebody that's been trying to convince you for a long time, but it's not really what you want. For you to have what you want, sometimes you got to press, sometimes you got to push. That's taking a chance, just like Ruth did. Okay? When Jacob met Rachel, he kissed her and he cried. Jacob took one look at Rachel and fell in love with her and promised her father he would work for her for seven years. Her father tricked him and gave him her, uh, her older sister. They ended up working another seven years. That's 14 years that Jacob worked for Rachel. That's how much he loved her. That's how much he wanted to be with her. He pressed for 14 years before he got to marry the woman of his dreams. Do you see that? That's what I'm saying. That's where some of the blessings you've been talking about is not that they're not on earth. They're there. They're just not close on the shore. you got to press out to get to them. And some people just don't. I've met people in my life, both saved and unsaved, both saint and sinner, that have no kind of press in them. If it don't happen easily, and if it don't happen on the first try, they just say, forget it. <clears throat> That's why a lot of people say that they don't believe in miracles. The miracles in the Bible, you have to study them. But what people mean is they thought it was going to be magic. They thought all I have to do is wave my hands or say the magic word and it just happened. And if it doesn't happen that way, then God isn't real and the Bible ain't true and forget about all this Jesus stuff. And that's not what the Bible teaches. Remember when the Lord cursed a fig tree? They came back the next day to see the fig tree dried up by the root. Now, it did dry up in less than a day, but Jesus cursed it, and then they moved on. Then they came back later and saw that it was dried up from the root. You see what I mean? When the lepers came to the Lord and asked for healing, the Lord said, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says, as they went, they were cleansed. If they had been like us, they would have stood there in front of Jesus and demanded, no, you heal us now. <laughs> no, you do it this way. No, just, just do what you're going to do. And that ain't what the Lord said. That means if they had stood there and argued with Jesus, they would have never gotten healed. They had to do what the Lord said do, and as they went. You see what I mean? So like I said, I have met people that don't have any press in them. They have no press in them, and those are the people that are always talking about God doesn't do miracles today. That's not true. I have seen too many. It's too late to try to convince me of that, because I've seen too many, and I've been through too much stuff. God does do miracles. It just doesn't always look like what you thought. Okay? You got to press. You got to press into it. You got to press into deeper knowledge. You got to press into deeper relationship. A lot of people, okay, yeah, see, I'm hearing in the spirit right now that some people looking at me right now are having issues with their marriage. And they don't understand 
what's going on with that marriage. I can tell you what's going on with your marriage. Your marriage is God is calling you to a deeper level and you just don't want to go. Because to go out into that deeper level, you're going to have to let some things go, leave them back on the shore. You're going to have to let some of that stuff go so you can press in to the deep. Okay? I've heard people for a long time now actually say things like, well, I had an affair or my partner had an affair <coughs> and then our marriage got better. Fail. That's not what happened. What happened is one of y'all had an affair and then you got caught. And then once you got caught, the original husband and wife, not the third party, the original husband and wife sat down and had an honest conversation. And you told that person what you were missing from the relationship. And you told that person what you really wanted. And they told you what they were missing and they told you what they really wanted. Then your marriage got better. You could have skipped the whole affair part. The problem was you weren't willing to press into the deep water and have that honest conversation. Okay? So then something had to happen. Then now you got two situations. You got the original problem, now you got the affair. Then you sat down and you pressed into deep water and you opened up your heart and you said, baby, this is how I really feel. I hate it when you do this. I love it when you do that. I need more of this from you. I need less of this from you. You told the truth and you went into the deep water of your heart and then your marriage got better. You didn't have to have an affair for that to happen. If you knew how to press out in, into the deep water and be honest about how you felt from the jump. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's the word of the Lord in this hour. We got to press out into that deep water. Now I'm receiving this just like I'm saying it. I'm receiving it just like I'm releasing it to you. So I'm thinking about areas in my life where I have to press deeper because I don't press pretty deep in some areas, but it looks like I got to go deeper in some areas. But if God is telling us that the blessings are already here, they're just not on the shore. That means we're not going to get them until we go out there where the deep water is. You see what I mean? I have been, just to give you another real life example, I have been the only black man in the room in many a songwriting convention. I've gone to several songwriting conventions and I went to some places in Nashville and I was in this one place where I was the only black person in the room. And it didn't even occur to me I was the only black person in the room until a friend of mine at the time pointed it out to me. They were like, you know, David, they were blah, 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 because you're the only black guy in the room. I was like, really? They're like, yeah. I didn't even think about it. Didn't even think about it. So some people would have stayed out of that situation because whatever, but I was willing to go on in there and whatever because I wasn't even thinking about it because I was willing to put my music out there and I actually got to hand my music to, to the president of Sony ATV. He came down from his office and met me personally and said, David, I just want to shake your hands and I'd love to receive your CD and it just blew my mind. You know why? Because I wasn't about to sit around and let people talk me out of my blessing. I wasn't about to sit around and let people talk me out of my opportunity. I don't care what they thought of me or my skin color or whatever. I was there to do, get my music going and that's what I did. You see what I mean? I pressed. Okay, it didn't just happen. You don't just get to meet the president of Sony ATV without making a few, a few phone calls and letting them know that you're serious. Without pressing. But I pressed and I met him face to face and he shook my hand. See what I mean? So that's what I mean when I say in terms of real life application, God is telling us that the blessings we want are here. That means they're already on earth. That means that they're not coming. That means they're already here. But that means we got to press out further than where we are now to get, to get into those blessings, okay? That's why I keep stressing that because I want you to be encouraged because I'm going to have to check my life and see where I need to do that too. Okay? All right. <clears throat> if you have any prayer requests, please put them on the screen right now because I will be more than happy to pray for you. My pastor was talking this morning about, about a lot of Christians that are just mean. I was vibing with every word that he was saying. Anybody can have a bad day. Anybody can lose their temper. Any, you can catch anybody in a bad moment. But being consistently mean over time so I say that to say that we're supposed to pray for each other and joyfully so. I'm happy to lock arms with you and lift your prayer requests up for God, before God, because that's what we're supposed to do as Christians. 
help bear each other's burdens. Let the saints know that you're not going through what you're going through alone. You're not out there by yourself. Okay? You got somebody to stand in faith with you to help you overcome the devil. So if you got any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. If I don't see them while I'm here live, there might be a glitch in Facebook or Periscope. If I don't see them while I'm here live, but I see them later, then I will pray for them after I sign off if they're not on the screen right now for some reason. Okay? All right, as I tell you every week, when you see me close my eyes and start to speak in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost about physical healing, casting out demons, finances, and if he has any more words he wants me to release. So that's where I'm going now. Okay, the Holy Ghost is showing me this area on somebody's face. This is sinuses. I dealt with sinuses last week, too. So again, if somebody's dealing with sinuses, this is what I'm seeing right here. Now, this is the right side of my face I'm touching. It looks like the left side where you're looking at me. But if, if you've got a sinus thing right here, put your hand right here and say, in the name of Jesus, I command my sinuses to open up. I command the allergies to flee my body. I don't have any allergies. My blood, my immune system, my lungs, my kidneys and my liver are 100% whole. I'm free from allergies, and my sinus passages are open right now. In Jesus' name, I command it, because by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. All right? Okay, the Holy Ghost has shown me left foot or left toe. So somebody, if you have a problem right now with your left foot or your left toe, Put your hand on your foot. If you can't reach your left foot or your left toe, then put your hand on your knee, okay? And say, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I speak life to all five of my left toes. I speak life to whatever toe might right now be in pain. I speak peace and life to that toe, and I speak peace to my left foot. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. So no amputation, no gangrene, no cancer. Okay? None of that. No infection. We do not receive that. But we speak life, okay, to all five of your toes and to your left foot. Okay? You don't have to lose your foot. You don't have to gangrene. You don't have to have cancer. You don't have to have amputation. You don't have to have infection. What you do need to do is believe the word of God that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are already healed. And speak that healing into that toe or that foot. Okay? And you'll feel the healing power. Feel it. You can feel the healing power of God flow as you speak the words of life to your toes and your foot. All right? Okay. Holy Ghost is saying something about, okay, okay, I'm seeing this space up here and your teeth and your mouth. So in the name of Jesus, I speak life. Put your hand in that space and say, in the name of Jesus, I speak life. I speak life to my lips. I speak life right underneath my nose. I speak life to my teeth and I speak life to my mouth. But also the Holy Ghost is telling me that you got to be careful as to what's coming out of your mouth. Holy Ghost is telling me right now that some of y'all are cursing your own harvest because of what you are confessing. And remember the Lord said that you're going to have what you say. If you keep speaking negativity, if you keep speaking cursing, if you're always down, if you're always talking about sin, if you're always talking about what's wrong, that's what's going to manifest. And the Holy Ghost has shown me that there are some unclean things coming out of people's mouths. So in the name of Jesus, we rebuke all demonic spirits of profanity. If there's cursing or blasphemy, I command you to come out and get off that tongue in Jesus' name and rather let the tongue of the children of God be full of life and fruit and blessing and health and healing and speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. Say what the scriptures say and that's what will manifest in your life. Don't say what your circumstances say. Don't say what the demons say. Don't say what your friends say. Don't say what your senses tell you. Say what thus saith the Lord only and that's what will manifest. Okay? Yeah, a lot of healing needed up there. Mm. All right, and the Lord is saying to some of y'all, like I said earlier in the message, some of y'all, the finances you're looking for are out deeper than where you are now. 
Do you hear that? So some of y'all that have been praying to God about money, you have the answer. The answer's on earth. It's not coming. It's here. It's just not where you are. You have to press out to it to get the finances you've been praying for. Okay? All right. All right. I think that's it. Praise God. Well, I was encouraged by that. I'm always encouraged by that. I'm receiving it as the Spirit of God has given it. And I'm excited. And like I said, I'm going to have to go back and look at some areas in my life where maybe I need to go deeper so I can get the manifestation. Because if it's here, what we want it is in our hands. We want it in our lives. If you've been waiting on finances, you need that money in your bank account. If you've been trying to get married, you want to be in that relationship because you're probably tired of being lonely and single. If you want to get that business going, you want to get it going. If you want to go back to school, you want to get enrolled and get your tuition going so you can graduate, so you can get that degree. Because the point of going to school is not to go to school. The point of going to school is to graduate with a degree with that education. Okay? So if it's here on earth, then it's time to press out. It's time to push and press out and launch out into the deep to get those deeper blessings of God. All right? Amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Uh, have a great rest of your week. And I will see you same time next week. God bless.